Uh, France 24's Leela Jacinto is in Diyar Barkil. We can cross uh, live to her. Uh, Leela, um, let's talk a little bit about the mood. I understand you're at polling stations today talking to people. Uh, what's been the atmosphere where you are? Well, the, the atmosphere here in Diyarbakir is, I would say, quite opposite from Will is find, what Will is finding in Istanbul. There is a sense of resignation here. Uh, you, I'm hearing a lot of dark humor because there, there's a resignation that Erdogan will win. Now, I am in the Kurdish-dominated southeast. Diyarbakir is the largest city in the Kurdish-dominated southeast area. And this region came out very strongly for the opposition candidate, Kilish Darulu, in the first round. But in the second round, uh, there was a bit of a quandary because between the two rounds, Kilish Daurulu booed the nationalist vote and he got the support of an ultra-nationalist politician, Umid Uzda. Uh, he's not a very popular figure among the Kurds because uh, when you talk about ultra-nationalism in Turkey, you are also talking about Kurdish rights. Uh, and so the Kurds uh, were, tell me, the voters here tell me, that they voted for the opposition candidate Kilish Daulu, sort of they held their noses and voted for him. So it was not so much in support of the opposition candidate, but it was much more an anti-Erdogan vote. Now, the Kurds are called the perennial kingmakers of Turkish elections. They constitute around 20% of Turkey's electorate, and they tend to vote as a cohesive bloc. They are very mobilized. So this is, this is a base that opposition uh, candidates really try to woo. Uh, but the Kurdish Kurds say they don't really have a stake in this runoff. They don't have a candidate in the presidential election. I mean, Lila, as you say, this is, of course, uh, Diyarbakir is a, is a you know, Kurdish majority area. How have Kurdish voters seen this in terms of whether it's been a, a free and fair election? What's been their perspective on this? Well, there are uh, supporters of President Erdogan among the Kurds as well uh, in this city. They are a minority, but they exist, uh, and they say that they want continuity. But for supporters of Kilish Darulu, who are in, in the majority here, they say that this was, in no way was this a fair election. Uh, voters here are overwhelmingly supporters of the pro-Kurdish HDP party. Uh, the HDP party did not run under its own name because it faces legal harassment. It has cases against it uh, that will close the party. So they ran under a new name, a Green Left Party. Their leader, Shalayatin Demirtas, is in jail. Uh, so, and the, the party, uh, the, the candidates here tell me that there was an intimidation during their campaigning. This is a con constant uh, event that we see uh, in these parts uh, of, of Turkey. So they say that it was not a fair game at all. Candidates say they got no time on national media. They had to go into remote parts of provinces to do their campaigning. Their, their supporters face low-level police intimidation. Uh, police come in and, you know, talk to them after they vote, uh, after they go for campaign events. So there, there is a constant struggle to uh, to simply campaign if you are the pro-Kurdish party. Uh, so, so voters here do not think it is it is a free and fair election at all. Kurdish women in particular are very worried uh, because they see they see an Erdogan win as 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 the next five years they would really lose their rights because there is a local party here. It's called the Huda Par. Uh, it's a Kurdish conservative Islamist party that is in alliance with the AK. So the stakes here are very high, and it's, this is a very interesting region to watch. All right, Lila, for now, reporting for us from Diyarbakir. Thanks so much.